Chapter 8, Episode 3. Sarah had to run. She wasn't hungry, but she needed to feed. Usually she could go three to five or five days without thinking about feeding. She could go home, eat and come back, but there was no live food at home. She would have to hunt again. She hated being so distracted. Sarah, sorry what? I'm so tired. Susanna, I have to go out for a run. I have to get really tired before I can sleep. Really? Most every night. It shows. Have fun and come back. Sarah touched Susanna's eyes to close them, then kissed them, kissed them both. She waited to make sure Susanna was asleep, then slid out of bed. She went to the shop to get what she needed. She decided on Central Park. Central Park was not the best place to feed because of all the people around, but she would be careful. She would make it work. She decided on her potential rape victim act. Provoke a provocation. Jump right into the event with a little indig indignant intent. No great acting talent was needed to attract someone who wanted to rape a young woman lost in Central Park very late at night. The difficulty was finding the right, one, the right one. The first one was too fat and old, so she kicked him really hard in the nuts. You fucking bitch! The next guy was also unsuitable. He turned around as soon as Sarah told him to fuck off. Sarah sat on a bench and tried to relax. She was trying too hard. She would have asked herself why she was so on edge if she didn't already know why. Focus. Pay attention to the now and nothing beyond it. The bench she was sitting on was sitting in a shadow cast by a tree. Sarah looked out into the dim light at nothing in particular. If something moved, she would give it her attention. First, her attention focused on the sounds. There was the hum of the city that sometimes seemed to go unnoticed but was always there. She heard the sound of someone behind her trying to go unnoticed. She knew the sound. It demanded attention to focus on where it was and where it would next be. Sarah knew it was the guy she told to fuck off. He had decided whatever it was that drove a person to invade another's sovereignty. Sarah focused on the movement of the arm. She had to be careful. If he just wanted to kill her and stabbed her in the back of the neck, she would have to react quickly. If he continued to move slowly, he would reach around her neck. When the arm and the knife finally did come around, she bit into the thumb so fast that the attacker was more shocked by her quickness than her bite. The knife was let go. Okay, okay, wait, stop! Sarah bit harder until she heard bones crunch. She got the first taste of his blood. Sarah heard the movement of his left arm reaching. It was without a knife, she was certain. It was of little danger. She waited a moment without moving. Maybe he could imagine she was content to hold his broken thumb and her clenched teeth. It gave the attacker new hope. The disappointment of losing that little dream of escaping retribution, retribution added a zing to the meat. It made the whole eating experience just a bit more enjoyable. She stood and turned with her thumb joint still between her teeth. The pain forced him to turn his body to compensate the tear tearing. He fell and scrambled over the back of the bench trying to keep his hand against the face of the mad bitch where he knew his thumb must be. But he was sprawled over the bench and she was above him, looking down with two black holes where her eyes should have been.